Welcome back, real nerds. It's time for some real talk. I'm your host today for Scooter's Take on 23 August 2017. I am your host, Scooter, a.k.a. Scott, a.k.a. It's Wednesday? Hump day? Hashtag. Welcome back to twitch.tv forward slash real nerds real talk for today's episode of Scooter's Take. We have some awesome news. We have something that is going to blow your mind if you haven't heard of it. I'm saying 99% of you have never even heard of of this awesome new app coming to Android and iOS and all kinds of awesome mobile stuff. It's going to blow Pokemon Go out of the water. I mean, the only thing that sucks is that it doesn't have a huge following like Pokemon does to kind of get it off the ground, and it's not backed by a company like Nintendo. But we will get into it. I will, I'm will. i super excited to bring it to you. I personally have... Um, I You know, we'll get to it. I, I'll, I'll tell you what I did when we get to it. But to start off... As we usually do on Wednesday mornings, or I should say Wednesday afternoons now because it's 1 p.m., but as we usually do on Wednesdays during Scooter's Take, I bring you the updated news for GTA 5 for the online weekly update. So from August 22nd yesterday to August 28th, we have a new vehicle, the Ocelot Ardent weaponized sports car for $1.15 million on Warstock, equipped with front-mounted machine guns. Sounds like death. And hopefully you guys are enjoying the new quality of video with the new camera. I am loving this thing. It is a godsend. Next up for GTA 5, we have two times GTA bucks and RP bonus rewards for Bunker Series Vehicle Vendetta and Vehicle Cargo Cell Missions. There's a 25% discount on Smoke Tree Road Bunker, Vehicle Cargo Warehouses, Executive Office Spaces, Rocket Voltic, Cognoscenti 55, and Shafter LWB. I'm glad I have no idea what most of these things are. Just point that out. 25% gun running research rate boost. Premium race is going to be Pulse, which is the Rocket Voltic, and the time trial is going to be coast to coast. So all of you GTA 5 players, hope you have a fun time this week with all the new stuff. Hope that you guys have enough money to buy all those uh, cool cars and upgrades and whatnot. And if not, you know, go spend real money, I guess. I can't, I can't, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of a, I guess I'm kind of a hypocrite when it comes to spending money on games after the fact because sometimes I will and sometimes I won't but it really depends I mean games or GTA 5 in general is a great game to get invested in but just not my style so repping the Joker today if you can't tell ha 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 Joker has some news in, or has some nerd news going on today I mean I guess every time Joker comes up in the news it's nerd news because it's the Joker but either way there's a Joker origin movie sto- or origin story movie in development with a popular director or producer Martin Scorsese as a producer alongside the directors. So the directors or the director is going to be sorry, the development stages are by Warner Brothers in DC with a man named Phillips on board to direct and co write the script with Scott Silver. I don't know who Phillips' first name is or if that's his last name, but there you go. But the F- Scott Silver is one of the people who wrote Eminem's Eight Mile. So that was a really good movie. The Joker is very, you know, dark and whatnot. Now, the big thing about this movie, really, is, besides the Martin Scorsese, Martin Scorsese thing, is the fact that Jared Leto will not be playing the Joker or wherever, or whatever the Joker is in this movie. You know, it could be a him as a child or whatever, but in essence, as of right now, July or August 23rd, 2017, Jared Leto will not be playing the Joker in this, mo- this new movie. This is going to be a new uh, version of spinoffs, more or less that DC Universe is going to be doing so that they can bring more, not saying that they're not canon necessarily, but they're not exactly, they don't follow, they're not following the structure of what the DC Universe is doing right now. Kind of like, you know, Marvel's Universe. Like the Defenders and all that, those are all canon-esque storylines and they tie into the movies a little bit, but you really don't see too much of the movies making tribute, you know, paying too much tribute to those, uh, the spin-off TV shows and whatnot. So these are going to be more like one-off stories, just so, you know, fans like us can really enjoy a live-action uh, Joker movie without having, you know, an animated film, which DC Universe is really good at making animated films. They have by far the best animated animated films, animated TV shows, hands down. But I'm excited for this. I love the Joker. I love DC. I love Batman. So it's going to be a good day when that finally comes out, which... 
I believe it said it's looking at like 2018. So sad, sad stories. But the next Warner Brothers film, Justice League, November 17th. I'm ready for it. I hope it's good. Batman vs. Superman, a lot of people said it was bad. I think it was decent. It definitely wasn't where we were supposed to be with that film, though. Just saying. Suicide Squad, what the fuck? But, you know, as a DC fan, I'll get over it. I usually tend to. So, on the uh, on the movie side of things, or TV show movie side of thing, Star Wars, Forces of Destiny. So, this is a thing I actually never heard about, and I like to say that I'm a pretty big Star Wars nerd. But... I guess not enough. I didn't know about this thing. It's called Star Wars Forces of Destiny. It's a web, like a web show. You know, you, you think us being on YouTube and whatnot, we would know about web shows, but there are literally so many web shows, as you know. But it's it's now being taken on by Lucasfilms. They're, be, you know, they're partnering up or whatever to make, I guess, a bigger and better show. Now, I don't know if this means that it's only going to be on the internet and like stay where it's at in the web shows and then just have the backing of the official companies. But it's a extremely fan or extremely female centric storyline, um, you know, showboast showboating the female side of the Star Wars universe that we really don't get to see a lot because it's you know, as we all know, the industry is pretty male led. But it's ironic that I'm saying that while sitting in front of a camera. But either way, we need a female. We do. We'll talk about that later. But anyways. Star Wars has always been a very male-driven storyline with female counterparts being in the films and being part of the story, but never really being the focus of the story. Now, Padme was a pretty big part of the prequels, but really she wasn't... Like, she was she was needed for the plot and for the story, obviously, but she was, she didn't play a huge role. Like, she's, mem- she's mem- or, or, you know, iconic, kind of like Princess Leia was, but even... I would even say Padme in the original... Tr- or the prequel trilogy did less than... Leia does, because Leia's, you know, she kind of gets into it every once in a while. But either way, you know, you have Luke, you have Han. Those are the main characters for the most part. You really can't call it a trio when you're really seeing Luke and Han the most of the time on the screen. So this is a good thing for Star Wars, I think. It's an animated series, but the animation looks really, really nice. And the videos I was watching when I was researching this, you know, this is, these are animated prior to becoming partnered with these other companies. So if that's what it's going to look like, you know, then only being partnered with these other bigger companies like LucasArts or LucasFilms, whatever, are going to bring them just better quality everything, you know, like kind of like us. Like when we started, we had very little and we we don't have any sponsors or anything, people giving us money, but, you know, we slowly got bigger and better starting to figure out new things and whatnot. So like the camera, that took me five hours to figure out last night. That thing is annoying. Holy crap. And I finally, I had to go to Walmart at like 11 p.m. last night, just so nerds at night last night would have this camera. So, but I'm glad I did. No regrets. No regrets. All right, going on to video games for a little bit. Injustice 2 is getting two new characters coming up here in September. With a release date of September 12th for the Fighter Pack 2, you'll be able to get Raiden and Hellboy on Injustice 2. Now, both characters will not be available on September 12th. The other, uh, what's it called? The, it looks like... Raiden or Hellboy will be available at some point after September 12th, and then the other character will be available at some point else. They haven't released the exact dates for each individual thing, but there are a couple things coming in that DLC pack, so make sure you look out for that on September 12th. If you're an Injustice 2 player, I personally have not played it yet. I played Injustice 1 through the whole thing. You know, you know Scott's logic, if you haven't finished, you haven't played it. I did finish Injustice 2, so I mean, it only took two hours, so that kind of sucked. It was a good game, you know, all in all, for what it was. So FIFA 18, we talked about this coming to the Switch uh, this year, kind of being EA's kind of like test, you know, test subject mouse thing to see if the Switch is really going to take EA to where it can make money on the system. So I watched some gameplay from Gamescom of the new FIFA 18 game coming up, and they're playing in tabletop mode. And this is on IGN.com, so if you want to watch the video, go ahead and go over there. But... It's basically just two people with two of the, you know, the Switch, uh, the Joy-Cons on the sideways mode, and they're playing tabletop mode with the Switch, so it's just the actual tablet on the kickstand playing it. And even on that little screen, I mean, I think it's like seven, eight inches, whatever. It's not even that small compared to a cell phone, but for gaming, it's pretty small. And even on that small screen, and I'm watching through a video, so I'm watching through a camera, so I'm not picking up all those really nice details that I would see if I was actually looking at the screen. And it still looks really good. 
Now, I'm not a FIFA player, so I can't say for exact, you know, on exact experience, like firsthand experience, what the game really looks like on a console, like a PlayStation 4 Pro or whatever. But I mean, for the for the ability to have it on the go, and the ability to play multiplayer on one screen, I mean. You got me on that one. I mean, that's why I like the Switch. It's a huge... It's It incorporates a lot of, like, playing with friends. It incorpor- I mean, they're... Don't get me started on their party modes and their chat. But it incorporates a lot of things like playing with others. Playing with others on the same same console, which I love. Xbox One and PS4 have really gotten away from that. From playing, you know, playing locally. Like, you know we have all these guys on the r t crew. And we all... The reason we all started doing this is because we love playing video games. So... And a lot of the times, those, those video games are played next to each other, you know, on the same uh, same screen. Sometimes more than one screen if we had a LAN party, but which we haven't done that in a really long time. But you know, this is the kind of gaming that I grew up with, and most people who've been video gaming for a while did grow up with. And it's just something that I I personally like to do because I like to have people over, play you know a couple rounds of whatever, you know, go have a couple drinks, whatever, eat some food, hang out. So, I mean, that's like, as an adult, that's my gaming experience. I like doing that. You know, gaming online is also very fun, but it depends on the game for the most part. Like, some games you kind of require to play in person. Like, if they were if they were ever to make Mario Party, like, with matchmaking, where you can play with other people online, I don't know how I'd feel about that. I mean, it's cool bring more stuff to games. I get it. As long as they don't sacrifice something that was actually good. But, honestly, I don't think I'd ever play Mario Party with strangers. I mean, most of Mario Party is, like, yelling at each other, having fun, laughing. I mean, it's a it's a game you play in person, just, just my opinion, at least. So, a new, um, new like, Dirt Rally kind of game. So, this is going to be an arcade, not a simulator-style game. It's a game called Gravel, coming early 2018. I watched some gameplay from Gamescom. It's, it's really nice. So, I actually don't play many racing games. I do like racing games. My problem with racing games is I always end up... It takes usually there's a huge learning curve when it comes to actually getting down the movements to actually race well. But I did like Dirt, the game. You know, the, there's actually a couple Dirt uh, games out there, but Dirt was pretty cool. I liked rally carring, you know, using like uh, all those kind of vehicles off roading. So this is basically an all off road game, and it's meant to be an arcade style game where it's basically like a pick up play for a couple hours or play for a couple uh, races and put down. Easy to get into, easy to get out of, kind of like Rocket League, I guess. But Rocket League's you know completely different game. So, but the gameplay looked really, really nice. It looked like, you know, pretty simple to play. You know, it, apparently the game is more focused on having fun with other people online or whatever, or low or uh, computer. So, you know, this game, depending on the price point, I'm guessing it's going to come out at $60. It's, it just looks like it, but this might be a game that we get down the road after it's out for a little bit, depending on how much we find out more about this game. So obviously look out for that. All right. So we talked about the Pokemon tournaments, uh, the game card, the TCG, and the video game tournaments that happened this past weekend over in California. So every every time they do a championship like that, even like with the Nintendo World Championship, they always give out something. You know, Pokemon, especially, they give out Pokemon swag, like Pokemon book bags, stuff like that. So this year, I actually found an article from IGN.com as well about show, showcasing the different items that the World Championship uh, participants, at least I'm guessing from like top eight and above, this is what they got. So if you want to check out the actual pictures, go to iGen.com. The article is called Only World Class Pokemon Players Get This Rare Swag. And it's an article by Joshua Yell. Really great article, really awesome photo. So go check it out. But if you want to just know what they kind of have, it's a nice uh, Alola version Pokemon Sun backpack, it's light blue. Got the awesome, all these things are going to have that awesome like Pokemon World Championships. Uh, logo on it, but you got a backpack. There was some card protectors like sleeves. There were some card cases like the you know uh, top deck cases. You got a Pokemon uh, plushie, which is like a Pikachu. You got a nice like microfiber cloth with like all of the weaknesses and vulnerabilities on the back of each type. It's really nice. And then there was like a scarf. Um, they got a trainer card. It's called Champions Festival. So just real quick, what it does is once during each player's turn, if the player has six Pokemon in play. They may heal 10 damage from each of the Pokemon. So, and that's the stadium card, so that's going to be pretty cool. Um, like I said, deck box, stuff like that. I'm pretty sure that's about it. Oh, there's a hat. You got a blue hat. A really bad looking hat. And then a toe tag for your luggage. So, pretty cool. But, I mean, this is stuff that, this is collector's items. I mean, these are things that even I personally would like to have, like, one of, you know. 
I would probably, you know, buy a deck, a starter deck for Pokemon and just to have those card sleeves and then put them away, you know, like that'd be pretty cool. But I'm sure you'll see them on eBay at some point. They're always, you always find something on eBay at some point. Some other big news in cell phones, Samsung Galaxy Note 8 has been announced as well as the new gear that's going to be announced this coming week uh, later on. But the Galaxy Note 8, or Galaxy Note 8 is the new flagship smartphone from Samsung releasing September 15th. So that's right around the corner. It's August 23rd, so we got about three weeks. So I know a lot of people out there who love Android. I'm sorry you do. I mean, I do. I love Android too. I do. I actually, if you, if people who know me personally know that I switch back and forth between iOS and Android devices. But I kind of got burned on my last one, so I don't know. But just to go over the specs real quick, because that's pretty much all I care about for the most part. So, yeah. I mean, that's really all that's, all that's out right now for the most part. You can watch. There's some good hands-on videos on YouTube you can go check out as well. Um, I love MKB, MKBHD, as, as I'm sure most people do, just because he's so popular. But him and um, maybe John John Morrison, he might have one up right now. They're usually pretty quick with those hands-on videos because they get invited to those cool-ass you know, things. Uh, excuse me, but getting on to the specs, the Galaxy Note 8 will have a 6.3 inch Super AMOLED screen, so pretty much the same screen as the, as the Samsung um, S8. 18 by 5 or 18.5 by 9 aspect ratio, same deal, and it's going to have that infinity display that the um, S8 has as well. So that's going to be that near bezel-less sides. <clears throat> it's going to have a dual uh, camera camera situation on back situation with optical image stabilization. Um, it's going to be able to record 4K at 30 frames per second and 1080 at 60 frames per second. That's pretty standard nowadays with new flagship phones. It's going to have a 10 nanometer mobile processor. It does not say what the processor is, if it's going to be um, a Snapdragon like most U.S. phones have that aren't iOS, or if it's going to have one of Samsung's Exynos processors, which I personally think are better. Just saying. At least in the last two generations of Snapdragon processors, just not my cup of tea. It's also going to have 6 gigabits of RAM, pretty standard for a new flagship uh, Samsung phone. And it's also going to have a 33 milliamp, 3300 milliamp hour battery and wireless charging capabilities. So let's hope it doesn't blow up this time. I actually had a Galaxy Note 7. And there's another thing I'm going to talk to you about after this about the Galaxy Note 7. <clears throat> but I actually loved the Galaxy Note 7. But they bricked it on me, so I had to get rid of it. So I actually pro I might have even been on Android to this day waiting for the iPhone 8 to come out but had an Android for almost a year. But it's going to come out in a couple colors. Midnight Black, Deep Sea Blue, Orchid Gray, and Maple Gold. Maple Gold sounds kind of cool. It's also going to have three different storage options of 64, 128, and 256. So, And these are gigabytes, obviously. It's also going to have that micro, card, micro SD card expansion that they have had since the S6 or Note 6. No, well, no, Note 5, actually. It wouldn't be the Note 6. There was no Note 6. Pre-orders for Galaxy Note 8 will begin tomorrow, August 24th. So if you're looking to get this phone, I guarantee you there's going to be some kind of VR headset, some kind of Netflix gift card, some kind of crazy bonus to getting this phone. So if you're into it, I always tell people if they're going to get a Samsung Galaxy phone or a Samsung Note phone, always get it, like pre-order it and get it on release or whatever because you're going to get more stuff for it. So and even if you end up getting rid of it, because nowadays people upgrade, I upgrade almost three times a year with T-Mobile. So just saying, it's the piece of advice. But getting on to some more Samsung um, news. So Samsung is going to give a discount to any past owners of a Note 7. I don't know how exactly they're going to do this because, once again, they either either you own the phone, the Note 7, and it's bricked, or it's damn near impossible to use because they sent out those updates, or you traded it in or whatever and got a different phone. Some people did opt in to get like the S7 Edge or the S7, where some people just decided to switch. Like I went back from I went from the Note Seven back to an iPhone Seven. So, or actually no, it was actually a weird process because they didn't come out at the same time. You know, because usually Samsung the Note line the Note line of phones comes out like two weeks prior to the new iPhone. So I had to get like a loaner phone. It was weird, but I don't know exactly how they're gonna tell. Like, if it, is it like people who registered their devices? Is it people who did this and that other thing? Like, how are they gonna know you owned? A Galaxy Note 7. That's what I want to know. They don't actually have that here on the article, but it looks like it's going to be a phone value of up to $425. And that thing is those keywords are up to. So I really don't know 
what that means because it says Samsung announced that today former Note 7 owners can trade in their current phone for a value of up to $425 off the Note 8. Which, by the way, the Note 8 is going to cost $930 fucking dollars. I mean, we're getting we're, we're getting very, very close to this whole $1,000 cell phone thing. And I wouldn't put it past Apple to be the first ones to do it this year. Just saying, because we're rumored to have, what, three different models? The 7S, 7S which is going to be like the regular 4.7-inch uh, style phone. The 7S Plus. 5.5 inch and then the iPhone 8 which is supposed to be like this whole another design kind of like when the the Note 4 came out and then there was also the Note Edge you know like kind of like that same by you know same tile phone but slightly different thing so that's kind of what I'm thinking but like I said I don't know how they're going to do that I if, if I found anything else more about that I'll let you know because I I personally am huge into cell phone news or just cell phones in general but getting off the cell phone subject let's get into some Hulu so, Hulu is bringing live TV. This is kind of like direct TV now, which is something that I actually use for myself, for my family, because I don't like cable. I guess it's like having cable without having cable, you know. But it's going to be $40 per month, $40 per month, blah, 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 blah. $40 per month for live TV subscription, and the $8 per month on demand option will also be available. So, Basically, you can go from paying $8 for on-demand Hulu to $40 for live Hulu. So, I feel like people who buy Hulu, buy Hulu because they don't want to watch it when it's playing. Or just have the ability to play it after, or, you know, some, you know later. Because usually, if, especially if it's like a mainstream show, you'll have it about a day after it airs. You know, somewhere around there. So, you might not be in the know that, that next day. So, I mean, obviously, like Game of Thrones, stuff like that. You're going to be out of the know. But even me, like, I don't even watch Game of Thrones every weekend on Sunday. Sometimes I'll watch it on Monday or Tuesday. And shit, some, like, the last episode, which was fucking amazing, which we talked about. I watched that on Sunday night. It froze on me because, I was, cause, uh, you know, Game of Thrones always has super demand for the internet. And we ended up watching the last 20 minutes on Monday. So, not a bad gig. I really don't understand the whole 40 I mean, they're trying to compete with DirecTV now. They're trying to compete with Apple, obviously, because Apple's going to be coming out with their TV subscription. I know for a fact they're going to be doing this. I don't know for a fact, but it's going to happen. Apple's taking over the world, and I'm okay with it. In a way. In a way. But if you're looking for a live TV subscription uh, solution, and you like Hulu, and you like what they're offering, go check it out. I mean, this is $40 for live TV. DirecTV now starts out at $35 for their lowest package. I got in when they first started, so I have the $60 package at $35, but you can't get that anymore. So, you know, I haven't compared, you know, Hulu Live TV to DirecTV now and what channels they offer and whatnot, but, and how big their on demand is. I mean, I'm guessing Hulu has a better on demand than DirecTV now, but who knows? Because DirecTV now has been kind of slowly integrating more and more things. But their $60 package might be comparable to their, you know, to Hulu's $40 one. And then it's like, okay, well, you might as well buy a Hulu one. So, but for me, I have $35 one. So either way, I'm, I'm saving money. So I really don't need to look into it too much. But if you do, if you haven't gotten something and you're looking for something and you really like Hulu, you're already kind of into that whole ecosystem. There you go. Now, funny thing about Hulu Live TV is coming. It's actually coming to the 12 year old Xbox 360. So last generation... Xbox 360, it's 12 years old, and it's getting Hulu Live functionality before Roku. So Roku, if you don't know, is a huge uh, smart TV box. You know, they were out a lot for a long time. They have I don't know, probably like six or seven different Rokus out there now. But it's kind of weird how uh, Xbox 360, being so old that it is, is getting it before the, any, any Roku device. Like, even the newest Roku device still doesn't have it yet. So I don't know if maybe the, you know, Hulu doesn't like Roku's or the company just has problems with each other, but it's kind of, it's like, if I was Roku, I'd be like, are you, I mean, if, if for some reason Roku didn't know, I'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, it's kind of crap. Don't you think it's kind of crap, but Xbox 360, you know, users, if I'm sure there are still plenty of those people out there who love playing their Xbox 360 or even use it just as a smart TV device because, you know, they're pretty cheap nowadays and they pretty much do everything that a smart, like uh, Apple TV or whatever it does. I mean, I say pretty much, but I mean, you know, it's obviously going to have its limited use, 
But, you know, you can still, if you have an Xbox 360 for the last 10 years, you know, you don't need necessarily to upgrade to a, like, Apple TV or a Roku or an Amazon TV Fire Stick or whatever. So, we also have out of Gamescom, PUBG, Players Unknown Battlegrounds on Xbox. This is gameplay on Players Unknown Battlegrounds on Xbox One. So, it is now official. It will be coming out sometime in 2017. No exact date. So, we have fall holiday season. We're getting it sometime. That's all we know. And there's talks that it might not even be a PlayStation or an Xbox One exclusive or timed exclusive as we've been calling it. So, we don't know. But apparently it looks great. It, you know, a couple pixelated areas, but I mean, in, in the build they're using is probably, you know, you know, pre-beta or something like that. Something where they're still building it. It's not a completely stable uh, version of the game. So, I applaud that. I, I can't wait for it to come out on, on Xbox. They talked about how, you know, when you're playing PC, you have the ease and the kind of the advantage of having all these keystrokes and hot keys you can set and everything like that. So you can access inventory, yada, 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 very quickly. Um, with Xbox or console games, you have to, they have to change the UI and the functionality of the buttons to match the ability of the controller and so that it's not, in, you know, over encum encumbering or encompassing. I can't even think of the word. I'm just going to say come. If you can't if you can't press the buttons you need to press quickly enough, or if there's too many sequences of button pressing, people get become disinterested because it becomes too hard. So apparently they, they did a pretty good job of mapping the buttons on the console to make it easier for the player. So obviously it's not gonna be as quick as a PC when it comes to moving things around and blah blah blah, but they figured it out and hopefully it's good. I can't wait to get my hands on it. So, Nintendo Switch. We always talk. I, I feel like every time I want to talk about Nintendo Switch, I love Nintendo. Hashtag Nintendo love. But you can now purchase Nintendo Switch games with PayPal. So this is oddly a big deal because PayPal, as we all know, is pretty much you know ubiquitous in everything. Like it's you can pretty much pay with PayPal on almost any site. Almost, I mean, pretty much anything. You know, it, you pretty much it's always like you always see the Visa, Mastercard, and then PayPal. So. It's big news for the Switch because the Switch is finally getting things that we wanted to have, like the like the the ability to not pay with a credit card, but the ability to pay with PayPal. So, I like that they're moving forward. Anything that they can keep bringing to the Switch, I'm happy for, and I am 100% behind. So please keep doing that. All right, and oh my gosh, we're actually I think we're gonna make it to 30 minutes exactly today. That's kind of crazy. Last bit of news before I get into my big news because I'm leaving it for the end. Hopefully you didn't forget. But Bethesda, this is not the big news. It's a lot. It's one before that. Bethesda announces a release for Fallout, Doom, and Skyrim VR experiences. So I don't know how amazing these are going to be. I heard Skyrim is rough, like it's hard for the VR experience. But here are the dates that are coming out and what systems they will be on. So we have the VR version of Skyrim coming out on November 17th. It will be coming to PS, uh, PlayStation VR exclusively for right now. Followed by Doom uh, VFR, that's the title, on December 1st for both PS, PS VR, which is PlayStation VR, and the HTC Vive. And then finally, a Fallout 4, which will be available on uh, the Vive exclusively for on December 12th. So if you're into VR games, which you know, we are here more in a theoretical way because we don't own any, but we like the, I, well, most of us like the idea of VR games, but not necessarily the execution just yet. It's still getting there. I mean, we're we're still in like the early phases of VR really becoming a thing. And uh, honestly, I'm putting my money on augmented reality. That's just me. Have you seen the HoloLens? It's amazing. And we're actually about to talk about augmented reality in a second. But yeah, if you're in a VR and you have those, those the ability to play these things, you know, get your hands on them because these are gonna be huge, I think. And, and then you can tell me how they are because I won't be able to play them. So that'd be great. So getting into our last bit of news, and the thing is this. I'm not even early on this, which is sad. Like this has been out. This has been a thing for almost two years, at least. At least from what I've seen. So on Indiegogo, if you want to look this up, I'm, I'll probably put the, I'll put the link in the description down below on the YouTube video. But it's Indiegogo.com, right? And you have this. And all you have to do is search in Magus. So M A G U S S. It's a new mobile game. Uh, it's not out yet. So like you have to for to get the the ability to play. You have to pay in. Uh, they have different packages. I'll actually go over them real quick if you want. Well, I, I guess I'm not really asking your permission, but I'm going to do it anyways. So 
they're completely funded. They've been funded. They're at 217 percent funded since uh, last year, November. Right now, they're in their closed beta. So, if you pay, where is it at? If you pay forty five dollars, which is their second highest pack, their, their middle package, there's three available packages. The second package is forty five dollars. It's called uh, In Demand Ten Early Closed Beta. Within 24 hours of you purchasing it and being locked in, they'll send you the stuff so you can actually start playing on your phone. So you, there's a way you have to download the software, and it will, but it does work for iOS and Android. So even if you have iOS, you can still play the game. They'll just send you the basically they'll tell you the the way to do it. So this is a this is Harry Potter, but Pokemon Go. So it's called Magus, the mul the mobile multiplayer spellcasting game. You can buy a freaking wand. Like, Denisha, if you're watching, you can have a wand, and it's got it uses Bluetooth low energy technology because you actually have to write glyphs in the game. So, like, have you ever seen like Shadow Hunters or even Harry Potter in general? Because I mean, not to you know, in a way, they're writing something in air if you think about it. So, like, if you think about every time they move their wands, they're doing the spells in Harry Potter. If like there's like a dot, it wrote stuff. So it's kind of like a glyph, right? So this game uses glyphs, which allows you to cast certain spells so if you were playing you can play this completely but with just the phone you don't need the wand but you would be drawing in the glyphs with your hands right but if you get the wand you can literally use the wand to cast the glyph and then your phone will cast the spell that's amazing and it's augmented reality in a way well it's kind of like augmented reality so it's like think about pokemon go where you walk to different places and whatnot, and you see like Pokemon. So this game's gonna have the same kind of thing. It's gonna have like you use your GPS, you walk around real world, you see all these cool things, you see these creatures, and you have to fight them. You don't actually um, necessarily you're not trying to capture them like Pokemon. You're trying to kill them and get experience, and become a you know stronger wizard. It looks phenomenal, and you're actually the first ones to know about it before my wife. I bought it. So Brittany, if you're watching, love me. I'm gonna tell you when you get home. But sixty five dollars gets you so the $45 one is the one that gets you you know the ability to get it you actually get like a bunch of extras like founder stuff and like a VIP account and whatnot but I got the $65 package which is the $45 package with some extras so I'll go over them real quick with you because I am super excited to get this so you get the Magus wand which is a physical hardware which is a wand I don't know the exact size of it but I'm gonna go with like this I'm gonna have a freaking wand and I'm gonna cast spells I'm a wizard, Harry. Just saying. Super excited. Like, literally, like, right here somewhere. Somewhere around here, there's going to be an awesome picture after I edit this. God, I am excited. And I know this is going over half an hour, but I am super excited. So, for the $65 plan, plus shipping, so it's actually, like, a little bit more than 65 but you get access to the early closed beta after 24 hours of purchase. You get a founder-only starter ring called the Ring of Ancients, plus the founder-only starter amulet called the Amulet of the Ancients, plus starter set of ingredients for crafting. So you actually have to craft, you know, potions and stuff like this. So you actually have to collect ingredients, kind of like in Pokemon when you get like berries and whatnot. So same kind of concept. So you get a starter set of ingredients for crafting. You also get a Magus sticker set. I get stickers. I love stickers. Stickers. Stickers, stickers. But anyways, I get stickers, and you also get a redeemable code worth forty dollars of Magic Dust. For Magic Dust, I'm guessing, is going to be their in-game purchases, kind of like any other games, gems or whatever. But you get forty dollars worth of it. So personally, I think of any kind of in-app purchase, whatever you pay for it, cut it in half. And that's pretty much how much it's kind of worth if you were to really do it. That's how I kind of do it in my brain. So forty dollars worth of Magic Dust would save me twenty dollars off of this full price in my mind. So that alone pays for the difference between the early closed, the, the $45 plan, the $65 plan. That's how I kind of like just make it worth it in my head, you know? Plus, you get an instant upgrade to a premium VIP account with no limitations. And I also get an in-game title of Devoted Founder and my name in the backer credits. So it's, just, it's awesome. And I'm excited. And I can't wait to play it. Now, the other thing is trying to figure out how to put it on YouTube or Twitch or anything like that. It's probably ridiculously hard. I've seen a couple YouTube videos of people playing it. It seems ridiculously hard to play it and then get all the footage, like, especially from the phone, like, while you're playing it. But, I mean, if you can do it with Pokemon Go, I'm sure you can do it with this game. It's just probably harder to play it. But, you know, as soon as I get this in the mail or as soon as I get the code and start playing, I'll let you guys know. 
I'll start doing some. I can record my phone screen and stuff, so I'll probably start doing that a little bit. I can't wait. I'm super excited. But that has been today's episode of Scooter Steak. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. I hope you guys enjoyed the news that I give to you guys every Monday through Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time until about 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here at twitch.tv forward slash Real Nerds Real Talk. I hope you guys are enjoying how the new camera looks. I hope you guys tell me if it looks better, if it looks worse. I hope it doesn't look worse. It seems to look better to me. I am super stoked to have all this cool stuff that we've been doing. I've changed the background for this for this show. It just seems a little bit more, I don't know, welcoming, warming. I liked it a little bit more than that weird brick wall kind of thing. I mean, it worked for a while, but now we kind of, we're advancing our technologies. So now I'm an elf, a wood elf in the forest playing with magic wands. I can't wait. I hope to see you guys again sometime. Our next scheduled show is going to be today's Wednesday. So that means tomorrow is game of the day. So game of the day tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with myself and Bobby Law for about an hour. And then we're going to get into Scooter's Take after that. So I hope to see you guys there. Make sure you guys check out our YouTube channel. Check out all the videos you've probably missed, you might have missed, or you didn't miss, and just watch them again. Give me a like on those two. Follow us here on twitch.tv forward slash Real Nerds Real Talk. Go buy yourself a t-shirt at teespring.com forward slash RNRT. You guys are the greatest. I appreciate everything you guys do for us. I appreciate you guys watching. And have a wonderful... Wonderful day.